my name is Kate Hedberg. I'm an Applications Engineer here at Go Engineer. This video is to introduce you to how and why to use SOLIDWORKS Electrical Environment Archives. Start by opening the SOLIDWORKS Electrical Schematic application. You can close out of the Project Manager because you don't need to be in a specific project to create an environment archive. On the File tab, up at the top, there is a button for Archive Environment and Unarchive Environment. The archive process is essentially just zipping up symbols, manufacturer libraries, configurations, projects, etc. You do this to share data between users that aren't connected to your server and to create backups of your data. To zip up your data, you want to start with an archive, so select the Archive Environment button on the File tab. This brings up an archiving wizard that will hold your hand through the process. Start by clicking the Next button at the bottom of the dialog. The next page is letting you select what kind of data you want to archive. On the left-hand side, there's different options of how to select data. If you're doing an archive for a backup, it would make sense to make sure everything is selected. If you're just wanting to share data to another user that's not connected to your server, it makes sense to deselect everything that's not applicable to the conversation. If you just want to back up all your projects, select that option on the left. At the very bottom of the dialog, there's an option to remind you every so often to archive your data. I'll usually set this up to remind me every week or two on a Friday, so I can start it before I leave the office. Depending on how much data you have, this can take a little while to do a complete backup. Once you have all the data you want to archive selected, click the Next button. Depending on your selections, there will be different tabs if you want to get granular on which specific objects you want to include. For this example, I selected everything like a wild animal. The first tab is asking me which project templates I want to include. By default, they are set to Add but I can click that drop-down and select Do Nothing if I don't want this included in the archive. When you're all set, click the Next button at the bottom. The next tab is Projects. Again, they are defaulted to being added. The next tab is the Symbols tab. In the yellow box at the top, it's letting you know that the red entries are supplied with the software, green were created by the user, and blue is when the user has modified one of the supplied objects. You can do a group select by holding the control or shift keys and multi-selecting. This makes the process much less tedious. Keep clicking next through the tabs and ensuring that it's exactly the way you want. Once you've gone through all the details, there's a summary page of what you are going to archive. Here you can click the finish button near the lower right hand corner of the dialog. Next the software asks where you want to save this. I just make sure it's in a place I can remember to look for it. It'll then process all the information. The time it takes to do all of this depends on how much you've included. I found that archiving projects in an environment takes the longest time. I've sped this video up so we don't have to sit and watch stuff load. Eventually it'll finish and it'll give you a report of everything that was processed, not processed and failed. Click finish for it to finish compressing the archive. It'll then ask you if you want to open up the folder it's saved in. That's up to you, I'm not gonna do it. So now that you have your shiny new archive, what do you do with it? I like to take a screenshot of mine and frame it to remind myself of how smart and successful I am. But you can also unarchive it. Usually this will be on a different computer or after an update or something, but since I only have one computer, I'll do it here. To unarchive your environment, which is just an electrical specific way of saying unzipping, just go to the File tab inside of SOLIDWORKS Electrical and click Unarchive Environment. This brings up an open dialog to go find the archive data. For this example, I'm going to use the one that I just archived earlier in this video. It takes a bit of time to process what's in the archive, but not near as long as it takes to archive it originally. It then brings up an unarchiving wizard. Click Next to start the process. The first page is data selection, so you can pick and choose what information you want to add or replace to your electrical data. If this is restoring all of your electrical database after your old computer caught on fire, it would make sense to keep everything selected. For me, I have a lot of customers sending me data, so I pick and choose what is necessary to add to my application. Note that you can just click Finish at the bottom at this point, and the software will decide what to add or not. I usually don't do that because I want to make sure my items aren't being overwritten with garbage. But if this is a fresh install and you are just reloading your data, that's an option. Click Next to proceed. Since this is an archive of all of my existing stuff, the default unarchive action is replacing my project template data. If I click the drop down, I can choose if I want to replace, do nothing, or keep both. If I select the keep both option, the new name column lets me add a new name for the duplicate item. 
I'll click Next to continue. For all the other objects, the default action is to do nothing, so I don't accidentally overwrite my stuff. On the Symbols tab, if you click on one of the objects, it'll show you what the new symbol looks like and what the existing one in your library looks like. Again, you can choose to do nothing, keep both, or replace. On the Manufacturer Parts and Cable References tabs, you'll notice that the default option is to update. This means it'll overwrite your existing parts with the new ones in the archive. Once you click Next through all of the tabs and have everything set up the way you want, there's a summary page again. When you click Finish, it'll update your data accordingly. Once it's done, it'll give you a report of everything that's been processed and not processed. You can click Finish to close the dialog. That's really all there is to environment archives and unarchives. I usually have a complete archive every couple of weeks in case anything happens. If you have any questions, please reach out to us here at Go Engineer.